Welcome back to another video on Entronic Automotive. Today's video is brought to you by Forza Online Store. Their product range includes personal care, home appliances, electronics and many more. They also offer free island-wide delivery. Their link and WhatsApp number will be in the description below. Today we are going to talk about the dual clutch transmission. Namely the, the problem that occurs in most Honda vehicles with a dual clutch transmission. And first, it's best that we understand roughly how the clutch mechanism of a manual transmission vehicle works. The clutch consists of a flywheel, a friction plate, a pressure plate and a diaphragm spring. The flywheel of the clutch is connected to the crankshaft of the engine. The friction plate is connected to the input of the transmission. When we let go of the clutch pedal, the diaphragm spring exerts a force on the pressure plate which firmly presses the friction plate against the flywheel and due to the friction between the, pressure, the friction plate and the flywheel both of them are going to rotate at the same speed which is going to transfer torque into the transmission. On the other hand, when we depress the clutch pedal the diaphragm spring pulls the pressure plate backwards and when this happens there is no force exerted on the friction plate which means that it won't be rotating and then there is no torque transferred to the transmission. The third scenario is when we partially depress the clutch pedal. Here, the, there is only a small force exerted on the friction plate. The friction plate is going to be in contact with the flywheel, however, it won't be spinning at the same speed as the flywheel, which would cause a friction plate to uh, slip. This would happen, uh, for example, when a vehicle is stationary and when it starts to move. Now let's talk about the dual clutch transmission. In a dual clutch transmission, as the name implies, there's two clutches. One of the clutches takes care of the uh, odd gears of the transmission and the other clutch takes care of the even gears. For example, we have clutch 1 and clutch 2 here, so clutch 1 would take care of uh, gear number 1, 3 and 5 and clutch number 2 would take care of gears 2, 4 and 6. In this scenario, the input shaft or the shaft that transfers the torque from the friction plate to the transmission of uh, clutch 2, it's going to be a hollow shaft whereas clutch 1, it's going to be a solid shaft and uh, so as you can see here the solid shaft of uh, clutch 1 goes through the hollow shaft of clutch 2. To give you a simple explanation of how the dual clutch transmission works for example if you're in the first gear uh, while you're in the first gear the the shifter fork and the sleeve of the second gear would move into place and select the second gear and when it time, uh, comes time for you to shift up from first to second gears all that happens is clutch 1 disengages and then clutch 2 engages. So then it's a seamless transition, there's only a very small loss in power if not uh, nothing at all. We will talk about the dual clutch transmission in a dedicated video, however, the problem with most of the Honda vehicles uh, lies within these two clutches and so that's what we are going to talk about today. Honda has fitted uh, the DCT transmission into the, the Fit, the Grace and the Honda Vessel and however the this problem is seen mostly on the Honda bezel because it, it's heavier than the rest therefore the clutch, uh, there's more stress on the clutch uh, in the Honda bezel. As I mentioned earlier about the vehicle with a manual transmission if the clutch pedal is slightly depressed it would cause the, the clutch to slip and this is the exact same thing that happens in a DCT or dual clutch transmission. In a DCT when you are stationary and when you let go of the brake slightly the clutch is going to slip the same way it does in a, a manual transmission and this is what's going to cause the vehicle to inch forward slowly it's going to creep forward and it's not going to go forward with too much speed and this is for example what you would do in traffic or when you're going to start from uh, maybe when you're on a hill for example and this is one of the main pro uh, causes for this problem in the DCT as the clutch slips even in a manual transmission as the clutch slips it's going to uh, cause a lot of wear on the friction plate as this friction material wears off, the, the clutch oil is going to be contaminated with all of these uh, the deposits from this friction material and uh, the oil is supposed to be there to lubricate the entire system. Uh, whereas when, when there's contaminants in the oil, it's, it's going to do more harm than good. It's going to cause even further damage of the friction material. It's going to cause it to wear out even faster and uh, it will eventually lead to the friction material on the friction plate being completely worn out and you're just going to end up with a, a steel disc 
without any friction material. When there is no friction material left on the friction plate, uh, even though it is uh, pressed firmly against the flywheel, there won't be any friction between it. So the flywheel would spin, whereas the friction material, for example, would remain stationary. For example, if you were to go into drive, uh, the vehicle wouldn't move forward because there is no friction with the fl between the friction plate and the flywheel and there is no torque transferred through. A dual clutch transmission is not meant to be uh, used in a vehicle that is being driven in heavy traffic. Uh, this is because when you are in traffic, you won't be moving uh, forward at a high speed. So you, you would be inching forward or crawling forward and this would uh, mean that the clutch would always be slipping. As this happens, the friction material is going to wear off and then not just that, but the, the clutch oil is going to overheat, causing more problems. This problem cannot be prevented. When the clutch was designed, it was designed to slip in certain scenarios, so we can't prevent the wear of the clutch. What we can do is we can reduce how much it wears. Uh, and this can be done by, for example, when you are in traffic, uh, if the vehicle in front of you moves maybe just two or three feet forward, don't close that gap, you know, just stay still. And uh, finally, when the vehicle moves maybe, let's say, two meters, for example, ahead, then you can close that gap. Uh, this would cause the, the, the friction material or the, the friction plate to slip less, causing to less wear of the friction material. In this type of transmission, the clutch oil is separate from the transmission oil. So another method that we can use to reduce uh, the wear of the clutch is to replace the oil uh, frequently. So the recommended interval is 5000 kilometers. And when this is done, the, the oil, the contaminated oil, which has uh, deposits from the friction material is going to be drained out. You're going to take all of it out and then you're going to fill it with new oil and this oil is not going to be contaminated. So this would mean that there's going to be less uh, contaminated uh, particles. There's going to be less particles in the oil that is going to cause more wear of the friction plates. This was only a small explanation of what causes the problem in these transmissions and uh, a few steps that can be taken to prolong the life of the clutch. Uh, anyway, we are hoping to do uh, a dedicated video on the DCT transmission, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video. This is Entronic Automotive signing out. And remember, we are here to fuel your passion for cars.